afternoon. It's now Friday, 6.30 in the p.m., and this is your host for the next session of Hotline 21, U.S. Representative Danny Kenyatta Davis. And I can tell you, I am as excited and delighted as I can be. One, I just finished watching a very interesting show very interesting dialogue featuring my friend Gator Wallace Gator Bradley. And let me tell you, he's laid out, dressed up, looked like he's going to a senior prom <laughs> tonight or something. <laughs> so everything is just good. Today is Friday, yeah. and some folks call it Freestag uh, when I was taking German. And so it's a good day, but I, you know, I think of the week, I think of the blues. Nobody can say things like the black blues singer. The blues singer said they call it Stormy Monday. <laughs> Tuesday's just as bad. Wednesday's a little worse, and Thursday's also sad. But they tell me the eagle flies on a Friday. Saturday I go out and play. Sunday I go to church and kneel down on my knees and pray. Lord, have mercy on me. Well, Lord, have mercy. And the Lord has been having mercy on all of us because in spite of the coronavirus, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the global health concerns, we are still alive Amen. and looking up. So I am as thankful as I can be. In addition to that, the United States government has been doing a lot of good stuff. If you think that the child tax credit increase is not good stuff, you be low income. You be earning $50,000 a year and have two children. One of them is three years old and the other one is six. And you're going to get $550 every month for this year. If you filed income tax, you don't have to do anything. Just wait until the money got put in your account. If you didn't, or you didn't have to, you weren't required to, then you got to file. You got to look up the information. You can go to the Internal Revenue Service and look for https .irs government credits, deductions, child tax credit, non-filer, and sign up. If you ain't got no equipment to do all that kind of stuff, call my office. 773-533-7520, and somebody ought to be able to tell you how to get that money. And if they can't, let me know, and I might fire them. Because we want to make sure that everybody get this child tax credit money that is eligible to receive it. And I can't help but tell you I'm not wearing one right now. But just keep on wearing your mask. If you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you have children old enough, get them vaccinated because it's going to be time for children to go back to school. And we are having our 40th annual back to school picnic and parade on Saturday, August the 21st. And we hope that the pandemic numbers will have gone down a little bit more so we won't have a problem. 
We're having a parade, book bag, giveaway, vaccinations, and the taste of Austin. Of course, you can call 312-909-2541 and get the information if, if, if that's what you need, uh, 773-553-9940. And we will give you all the information. But bring the kids out. Thousands of book bags and school supplies and everything else that you need. Education is so important. Let me tell you, one of the reasons I went to school is because when I was a child, there was a song that says, Up in the morning, out to school, teachers are teaching the golden rule. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Talk to the tune of a hickory stick. You was my gal in calico, and I was your handsome barefoot beau. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. <laughs> so we were motivated stimulated, activated to go to school, you can give us a call at 312-738-1060. And now I have a wonderful guest in the studio with me this afternoon. He is a writer and has written a great book called Self-Employment. Empowerment. Empowerment. And I'm going to ask him to introduce himself and tell us something about you and what inspired or motivated you to write this book. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Danny Davis, for having me. And uh, my name is Albert Cooper. I'm from the west side of Chicago. Uh, the CHA High Rise on uh, Racine and Roosevelt might be familiar with it. Right. Down the street here. Right down the street. Yeah, how about that? Grew up and uh, was raised there in um, Abla. Yeah, 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 Abla yeah. Homes. Yeah. yeah. They got it looking good down there. Too it now. sure does. Uh, and uh, like I said, I was born and raised here in Chicago, Illinois, a single mother. And uh, what inspired me to write this book was I uh, kind of got into trouble. As you say, sometimes God know how to sit you down and get your attention, and that's what he did. He sent me down for 11 years. Really? 11 well, years. you know what the blues singer said about trouble? <laughs> trouble in mind. I'm blue, but I won't be blue always. Because yeah. someday the sun is going to shine yeah. in my front door. Yeah. Someday. Go right ahead. And, uh, I didn't want to stop you. Oh, you're all right. And uh, sat me down for 11 years, gave me time to think and uh, reevaluate my life and the decisions I was making and uh, the route I was going. And I wanted to change. I wanted to do something different, you know, from what I was doing. Being, um, you know, us, we get into the street life, and I wanted to do something different and uh I realized writing was an outlet for me. Whereas those things where I might react a certain way, I would write it down and give myself an a, a outlet out from reacting other ways I used to react. And uh, it just became a part of me. I think it was, I realized it became a gift, something to do to inspire people. And uh, I wrote my first book. And uh, I often say I, I, I did 11 years in the penitentiary, but I've been out 15. Oh, my goodness, you still got a youthful look. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I've been out 15, so I often say this after I say this, is that we as black men, we can fall, get back up, and do better. Let me tell you, man has the capacity to go to the deepest pit and then rise to the highest heights. Yeah. And I think you are perhaps an example yes, sir. of that. Now, when you say you got into the street life, what did you do? What was, what was you doing in the street? 
Well, you know, making bad gang banging and selling drugs and you know uh, uh, doing those things that we as men not supposed to be doing. Well, the drug selling that was a way to make money, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, did you have any other skill then where you could have well, been I, working? And well, I enjoyed playing basketball. Oh, okay. So uh, I thought that was gonna be my ticket out. Playing basketball, it's kind of short to be, <laughs> but I can play. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, I just had Sonny Sonny Parker, yeah, and and Mark Aguirre. Mm -hmm. I had a press conference with them day before yesterday. Yes, sir. They was urging young people to get vaccinated yes, and sir. young athletes. And we also had Dorothy Gator. You know, who Dorothy Gator is. No. She's the female coach. The best oh, yeah, in yeah, the world yeah, yeah, yeah. at Marshall High School. Oh, yeah. for all of I, you. I went she, to Marshall High School. You went to Marshall, yeah. so you've heard of yeah. Darth the Gator. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while, so. Now, yeah. Luther Bedford may have been the basketball yeah. coach when you was there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was, what, in 90? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, but Luther Bedford. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I, I know a lot of the yeah. people who taught at Marshall. Yeah. Yeah, I used to live right across the street from Marshall High School. Yeah, I, I live right there on Jackson, right there on the corner. Yeah. Kizzy, Jackson and Kizzy. Right I there. got my hair cut at the barber shop right there on the corner of Kedzie, yeah. just before you got to Madison. Yeah. Yeah. We were neighbors almost. Yeah. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. So, uh, and uh, I wanted to, when I got out, uh, I started uh, drawing a more interest in wanting to write a book. And uh, God put it on my heart. It was, you know, uh, we all are ministers. You know, every one of us are ministers. You might minister this way, and I might minister that way. And he inspired me to come up with a, a book called Inspirational Thoughts. Because sometimes we, we, we have thoughts that we don't express and we can't express or we don't know how to express. And, I, and I've learned that sometimes it's good to be able to express yourself because when you hold thoughts in, sometimes they, they, they become stressful and it leads you to become more uh, outspoken than you would be otherwise. So this was, like I said, this was my outlet. And I wanted to do something, not just for me, but something that would inspire young men, young boys, young women, young girls, to have a different mindset and their issues and their problems. And sometimes, you know, as you said, what's going on in the world, we are blessed to still be here, but some, we need inspiration right now. We need encouragement. We need somebody to step up and let us know that though today might seem doomed, but tomorrow is a brighter day if God allows us to see it. And I came up with, it's called Minister Cooper, Inspirational Thoughts, The Victory to a Broken Life. Well, let me ask you this. When you were in prison, did they teach you anything? Was there any thing that you could learn or do while you were there? Well, you, yeah, you, uh, actually, that's how I got my GED in the penitentiary. All right. I received my, uh, GED in the penitentiary, and you do, you can take college classes. I also uh, received a uh, certificate in custodial maintenance, stripping, waxing, and buffing floor, uh, janitorial work, and it's other fields that you can, uh, and I was actually going to try to get my HVAC certificate, but I didn't finish that, but it's things you can do in there to uh, I don't know about now. So you'd be pleased to know that we just got the Pell Grant restored, where people can go to college while they're in the penitentiary mm -hmm. and have it paid for from the Pell Grant. Because mm -hmm. college professors and all have to be paid. Nothing right. is free. Right. And anything that's going on, somebody have to pay for it. Yeah. And so... While President Obama was in office, he signed an executive order to experiment with it. They cut that out in the 90s, where you could use the Pell Grant, just like people used the Pell Grant to go to Chicago State, mm -hmm. or to go to Northeastern, or go to Northwestern. 
So now you can be in the penitentiary and use the Pell Grant to pay for college courses. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I worked on real hard and was one of the main reasons, I think, that we got that done. That's, that's good. Um, and they was doing it when I was locked up, too. And, you know, it's good to ha give a person a, a different form of eyesight from where they was so, going on. And, yep. What do you do now? Well, right now I'm, uh, I'm actually trying to get into the community and, you know, help the kids. And, you know, I'm, wor I'm actually working right now, but I'm trying to do other things. What kind of work you do I'm now? I'm going to get a uh, jewel. jewel. Grocery store. The grocery store? Yeah. All right. And so they hire people who have uh, background? Yes, sir. So, uh, and uh, this is not the only book. I'm still a writer. Uh, I do motivational speaking. I'm a poet. Oh, okay. So uh, it's, I'm trying to keep my hand into something positive, whichever way I can, and, you know, trying to do, start my own business and, do things such like that. My dad was a poet. He used to tell us monkey sitting on the end of the rail, picking his teeth with the end of his tail. Right. Mulberry leaves and colorful sleeves. All school teachers ain't hard to please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, all these little old yeah. things. But uh, so you've written poetry as well. Yes, sir. You know, I always say to young guys who are trying to date and do stuff like that, if they know poetry, they can always woo right. a girlfriend. They can get a lady, you ain't got to have no money and right. all that kind of stuff. You say, Shall I compare thee to a summer day? <laughs> Rough right. winds may shake the darling buds of right. May, yeah. but your beauty and your grace is here to stay, <laughs> you, know, you know. Give me a piece of bread, a jug of wine, with you by my side, put me in the woods, and I'll call it paradise. <laughs> yeah, all that kind of stuff really helps. So you are working, writing. Now you proclaim yourself as a minister. Do you have a church? No, you don't have to. You go to church? I used to, but you know, I think my calling is to for the the streets, for the men and women. Well, you know, the Jesus the Christ, as I understand from mm -hmm. reading the Bible, I don't think he ever pastored a church no. either. No, I don't believe he did. No. <laughs> or if he did, I never read about it. Right. But I think he inspired a lot of people. Yeah, so you don't have to necessarily be inside four walls. Right. You you can be outside right. and do your piece on the street. Yeah. You can take the good news. Yeah. Good news. And you can get in good trouble yeah. at the same time. Matter of fact, my good friend John Lewis often talked about good trouble. And, you know, he says his mama was always telling them, don't get in trouble if you do certain things. And if you got to get in trouble, make sure it's good trouble. Right. Yeah. And good trouble may be inspiring, motivating, uh, convincing other people that you can repair a broken life. That, that whatever is going on today does not have to be what's happening tomorrow. Right. So that's just really great stuff. And so you got another book you're working on right now? Yes, sir. What's the title of that one? It's going to be called Black Man Diary. Oh, my goodness. You know, there's so many people who are writing. I am going to put together a book fair yeah. and invite all of the people that I know who've written books to come to it and talk about their book 
and what inspired them. I want to write a book. I just have never have not gotten around to it yet. I've never taken the time to write a book, but I want to write a book, and hopefully the good Lord will give me the patience to sit down and try and collect my thoughts and put enough of them together to do a book. And, and that's why education, again, Saturday, August the 21st. And some of the people who are collaborating with us on this picnic, the Austin People's Action Center, Sankofa Safe Child Initiative, Chicago Westside Branch NAACP, Bright Leadership, Gift of Hope, Mothers on a Mission, Safe Streets, Introspect Youth Services, Fathers Who Care, the New West Section Club, Metro Farms, United Black Men, Chance Ministries, West Side Ministers Coalition, Alexander Movers, the Shanti Residential, Concerned Citizens, Mother's House, Loretta Hospital, Loretta Foundation. So it's a whole bunch of different entities all coming together to march and promote education. I always say that education is the key. The key to what? The key to whatever you want it to be. It unlocks those thoughts that you've got. It, it, it opens up avenues and approaches. If I was a young person and wanted to put down my thoughts and write a book, perhaps, what would you suggest to me that I do? I would suggest that you first uh, be dedicated to and not be fearful to write what's on your mind because a lot of people are afraid to write what's on their mind afraid that they won't be accepted afraid that they might not say it but I believe that whatever is you thinking it's, it should be important more important to you and despite of what nobody else say that's what you put down and that's what you write because that's what I did I wanted you know I dedicated myself to uh, giving the people some me being transparent so I you know I gave them what I felt at that time when I was thinking and what I was thinking. So I just encourage all young folks, whatever you, on your heart, write it down and don't be ashamed to express it. Don't be ashamed of what you think right. and don't fear to think. Right. You know, they are slaves who fear to speak for the fallen and the weak. They are slaves who will not choose hatred, scoffing, and abuse. Rather than in silence, shrink. They are slaves who dare not be in the right with two or three. <laughs> and you know, words can be powerful yeah. instruments, instruments of change, Instruments of hope, instruments of possibility. And I note in your acknowledgments that you acknowledge Miss Louise Cooperberg. You acknowledge your mother. And that just catches my attention because I had a tremendous love affair with my mother. Maisie Lee Davis. Let me tell you, sometimes I can just think about her and get misty eyed. I can just think about some of the things that she did. And I used to, as a little boy, I used to try to sometimes pretend that I was sick. And so my mama could come in and just put her hand on my 
head or something. Looked like if I had a little cold or fever or something, it would go away. Yeah. And 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 some of the greatest feelings I've ever had was one time when my mother thought she was going to die. And on her way to the hospital, she came where I was. <laughs> and I'm wondering if you're sick and on your way to the hospital, <laughs> why are you here? And she say, I just told your daddy to drive me by where you see if I saw you before I went to the hospital to die. Mm -hmm. And oh my goodness. <laughs> Anytime I had an idea of doing something I shouldn't do, I'm not studying. I happen to have been in college at that point. Mm -hmm. And I said, maybe I ought to be studying instead of playing be at whist. <laughs> yeah. uh, rather than doing a little something else that I shouldn't be doing. I think about her and and going back to do it. So would you come to a book fair if I have it? Sure. And and with a bunch of other authors and and share your thoughts. Cause that's something I think I really sure. want to do is gather some of the authors in the community together on a Sunday afternoon, perhaps someplace, and just uh, let people talk about what inspired them to write and convey and all that kind of good stuff. Sure. Are you married and have family? Or? No, I'm not married at this point. All right. Sounds like you may have been married. Once, yes. Once, well, you know, once is all right. I've been married myself for about 50 some years. Oh. 52. <laughs> exactly. Right. To be exact. That's a long time. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Cooper, Minister Cooper, mm -hmm. it is indeed a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for coming. And don't forget, August 21st, back to school picnic and parade. Wear your mask, and you've got the last word. Uh, I just want, if you all wanted to purchase the book, you can go on Amazon and uh, type in Minister Cooper Inspirational Thoughts. And it, it costs $15, and I can tell you it's worth the $15, and you ask how I know because it changed me and I wrote it. I've been clean 15 years by the grace of God. So if you want to purchase the book, once again, go on Amazon, type in Minister Cooper Inspirational Thoughts. Support. It'll help you, help you mentally. Thank you. Well, you know, by the grace, as a matter of fact, my good friend, Miss Mary Baldwin, and her husband used to sing that song for me every year at a birthday party I'd have. It says, by the grace, by the grace of the Lord, we've come a long way. By the grace, we've come a long way. Thank you so much. We'll be back next Friday. Until then, have a great week. Love somebody and love yourself. Thanks to Chicago Cable Television, and thanks to Hotline 21. We'll see you then.